morning, First Love family. Here we are, Daily Devos again. We're broadcasting live from the podcast studio at First Love Church, the upper upper room. Um, a few days ago, we started talking about counterfeit Christianity, and I, I feel like it's important that we um, don't always talk about the wonderful uh, benefits of Christianity, but we also need to provide some warnings for the kinds of things that are harmful to the church. And so that's what we've been doing day before yesterday, yesterday, and today. Um, we're talking about division today. And, uh, you know, not everybody that comes to the church is here to benefit the church. They may think that they are, but they have their opinions and their, their attitudes about certain things, and they aren't tolerant and they aren't teachable. I may say something from the pulpit, and somebody will be like, well, I don't believe that. That doesn't fit in with my, my opinion of, the, of what the Bible says. Well, you know, you've got to consider the fact that I've been studying the Bible for 25 years and I've got a degree in theology from one of the most renowned seminaries in the country. So maybe you, you should have another look instead of being divisive. Because it says here in Romans chapter 16... Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the do doctrine which you learned, and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus, but their own belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. So what's happening here is if the pastor of the church is properly trained and aware of the importance of true doctrine in the church, he will be preaching true doctrine. True doctrine. And if someone comes along who is not as well educated but has strong opinions about certain certain things and starts voicing those opinions around, well, the pastor's wrong about that. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm probably not. And if you think that I am, come to me and tell me, what about this pastor? I don't agree. And I'll research my studies from previously, and I'll get out my notes from Bible college, and maybe I'll call one of my professors, and I'll get to the bottom of it. But divisiveness is when you go to someone else and say, well, the pastor, you know, this, that, and the other thing. And that's, that's very harmful to the church, very harmful. And it's happened from time to time. And then there's those who have come to me and said, Pastor, you know, I, I feel this way about what you taught the other day. And I said, well, let's talk about it, and we'll get to the bottom of it and figure out why I said those things. And 99% of the time, they're like, oh, I didn't understand that. I didn't think of that. I didn't know that. I had never read that or heard that. And we move on and everything's wonderful. And that person got a little more education. But when that person goes to another church member and says, oh, I don't really know, you know if I believe what the pastor said about this, that, or the other thing, and that person goes to another person, and it, it, it destroys the trust that the body of Christ has in the leadership. And that's dangerous. It's dangerous, people. And it goes on. It goes on in, in, in Titus chapter two, um, starting in verse uh, ten. It says, "Reject a divisive man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning, being self-condemned." See, talking out of hand about something that's been taught in the church without investigating it with the leadership or with the pastor first is a very dangerous thing. And that person is warped and sinning and bringing self-condemnation. I don't want to see that here. I don't ever want to see that here. I want us to continue to be the loving, uh, committed to each other, uh, gracious family that we largely, mostly, almost entirely are.
but problems come up because whenever you've got a group of people, 150, 200 people, if you took both services and put them together, maybe 350, 400 people, um, you know, when people start talking out without really the authority of knowledge, it can be a tidal wave. It can be dangerous. Bad teaching in a church is bad. This is bad. Bad teaching in a church is bad teaching in a church. And if we don't keep a strong handle on doctrine, doctrinal truths that have been carried on since the apostles, then a lot of people will be led astray. I don't want to see that, man. I want to see this, this church strong and healthy and bi biblically educated and smart and able to answer questions. Peter says, you know, always be ready to have a defense for why we believe what, what we believe. And that's so important. Take this seriously, my friends. Take this seriously, my people. You guys are my family. I do this because I love you. I do this because this is my life's calling. My wife Dawn supports me and, and, and takes care of the women because that's her calling. That's what she loves about her life. Pastor Ben, same thing. We come from the same background, the same teaching, Calvary Chapel, distinctives is what we live by. Bibli biblically sound and secure. Pastor Dave, same thing. And we uh, hold each other accountable for what we teach. Now, I've had to be corrected a couple of times by Ben and Dave, and I've had to correct them a couple of times. Say, hey, you know, that wasn't quite right. It wasn't really bad, bad wrong, but it wasn't all the way correct. And they always come forward and say, you know, uh, Pastor Pete told me I, I, I said something improperly last week. And that's okay, but let's get real about it. But let's don't talk about it with other people who may get the idea that they're not in the right place for learning true doctrine. I just want you all to be aware, correcting someone who's teaching you is fine, but doing it outwardly towards other people and not the person who's teaching you is harmful. Okay, guys, love you very much. See you tomorrow. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, we just want to keep things in order. We just want to keep things right and true. We want to please you. We want to honor you. We want to edify you, and we want you to be glorified so that we want to be strong, strong in our doctrine, strong in our beliefs, strong in, 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 in believing the same thing together corporately. We thank you, and we praise you. I bless everybody here that's listening. I ask you to bless everybody here that's listening and that we might have the strongest church in the community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was a dead man walking until you left this dead man walking back to life. This is First Love Church. Welcome home.